Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is another video about Columbia University. And in this video, we'll be talking about how to fund your own master's program. And today we have a very special guest with us, my friend Mayank. Hi Mayank. Hi, hi Shivali. How are you? Good, good. Thank you for joining us today. So Mayank is here with us today to tell us everything about teaching assistantships at Columbia and uh, how to apply for it, how much you get paid for it, and the kind of work you have to do. So we'll be talking to him uh, about all of this in this video. So, so Mayank, why don't we start with uh, your introduction? Please tell us something about yourself, where you're working, and uh, what did you do at Columbia? Uh, so hi everyone, I'm Mayank. Uh, I was in the same undergraduate college as Shivalpi. Both of us went to DTU and graduated in 2018. Uh, both of us came for our masters to Columbia and both of us did the MSNCS track as well. Uh, more specifically, the machine learning track. Uh, so I was a teaching assistant in the first semester and a CA fellow in the second semester. You can talk more about that in the later questions, but uh, I think I graduated in 2019 of December and now I'm working as a software engineer at Amazon. Oh wow. Okay, so let's start from the beginning that how did you like hear about the teaching assistantship positions and when did you know that you know these are the positions that one should apply for? For example, like I think like we both joined college together but I knew about all this when I saw other people applying for it. Yeah, I mean I had spoken to a couple of uh, seniors from Columbia, some alumni, they had told me that you should apply as soon as possible, as soon as the portal opens up. And if possible, you should apply for courses you've done in your undergrad so that the professor also knows that you have some experience in it and you can be a good teaching assistant for it. So I think I applied maybe one week before our semester began. What? Uh, yeah. Even like before joining college? I think so, yeah. Wow, this is news to me. <laughs> I saw yeah. that portal in like my second semester, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I think I applied one week before like the semester started and I got to know that I got the position I think one day before the semester starts. Oh, okay. So like uh, you don't have to talk to the professors or like there's no face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with you and the professor to decide uh, whether your application has been accepted or not? So there was some interaction uh, after my application was, I think, shortlisted. I had a one-to-one -one, uh, with the professor. And like after that, he told me that, hey, you're, uh, I do you want to be the teaching assistant for the next semester? And I said, yes. Okay. And did, did he ask you any questions or any technical questions about the course? And how was that interview like? Uh, it wasn't very technical in nature, to be honest. It was more about my experience how i can help the course mm -hmm. uh, but it might differ from professor to professor my situation was very different i think i've heard a lot worse from other students who had like an actual exam like uh, interview for the teaching assistant position. so i think it depends from professor to professor okay got it okay so coming back to the portal, uh, do you remember like what all information you had to fill in that portal and uh, is, if there's anything specific that you remember that people must know? So I think the portal definitely asks for courses you've taken in your undergrad and probably what grade you got in them. Okay. Besides that, I think it asks for your resume and maybe some other additional experience you've had. Mm -hmm. And can you apply for more than one uh, TA subject? like to be a TA for more than one subject? Yeah, I think you can apply for, I think there's a limit of three or five and you can apply for uh, that much. Mm -hmm. The one thing to keep in mind is that you're allowed to apply for outside your own department. So even if you're coming for like a CS program, you're allowed to apply for teaching assistantship positions in the data science program or say the electrical, because courses are very much overlapping and the professor is open to taking students from different programs also. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. So you did your TA first uh, TA in your first semester itself. Uh, so what subject did you TA for and what were your responsibilities over the semester? So I was a TA for the introduction to databases course. Uh, it was a course which I'd already done in my undergrad. So I had some sort of knowledge of what to expect 
my responsibilities were mostly around grading uh, holding officers uh, yeah but i also i think set up a couple of assignments for the students mm-hmm. but yeah that's about it and how much time does it usually take to uh, do all this say for example how many hours a week so I, again i think it might differ from course to course introduction to databases was a very uh, widely enrolled course so i think there were more than 100 students mm-hmm. so grading of course took a lot more time than what it would take if there were like 30 students so i think on average i would have spent maybe 5 to 6 hours a week uh, for office hours for grading and for oh uh, yeah attending some classes also and uh, is it mandatory to attend those classes or no you can skip those classes as well uh, it depends on the professor some tell you to attend the classes so that you can answer the student's doubts then and there uh, some don't require but mine uh, asked me to attend so i had to attend okay so my next question is about the pay and the compensation so how much do you get paid as a ta and what is this payment schedule like do you get paid monthly or do you get paid at the end of the semester so your compensation as a ta will depend on how many credits you're taking for so as far as i remember in 2018 and 2019 the rate was $2500 for each credit you were taking for so for example if you were a ta for two credits so you would get 5000 but in my first semester i was only taking for one credit so i got a compensation of 2500 and that's for the whole semester uh, the payment i think you can set but i chose it to be bi weekly and it used to be around 400 or 500 uh, every second week so for one credit and one semester uh, you are getting paid 2500 and you can your yeah. payment schedule is flexible yeah yeah okay all right now coming to the more interesting part you were also a ta fellow and that is a very prestigious position to hold uh, so tell tell us more about that because people have heard about the teaching assistantships but people don't really know about the fellowship option so what is a ta fellow okay so ta fellowship is a program which is offered by the computer science department and specifically only computer science students can apply for it uh, i think it's a very prestigious program only about 5 to 6 students out of the whole cohort are selected every and year and based is, on the and the whole cohort is like 150 students or maybe more i don't know what 100 yeah, i think 150 160 Yeah, so you're one of those five people that I'm talking to. I feel like a celebrity right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. So yeah. five out of yeah. the cohort get selected for TA fellowship. And yeah, so based on how many hours you're teaching for, either it's like ten hours per week or twenty hours per week. Based on that, your tuition is also waived accordingly. So, for example, if you're a TA fellow. and your responsibility is to do ta ship for 10 hours a week then in that case two of your courses that means six credits are waived and if you are a ta and your responsibility is 20 hours per week in that case all four of your courses get waived okay so like uh, were you a ta for all like 20 hours a week or what was your status yep so in my second semester i was a ta fellow for 20 hours a week so all four of my courses got waived in that semester okay So for four courses, the fee would come around like twenty five thousand US dollars, right? Uh, yeah, I think in our year it was around that much. Yeah, so you saved twenty five thousand on your tuition fee for that semester, and did you earn anything on top of it as well? Like, yep. So as a TA fellow, you also get the TA compensation. Mm-hmm. Since I was like twenty hours per week, I got so twenty five hundred into two, which is five thousand for the semester as well. Okay, so all in all, it came came out to be like around thirty thousand US dollars of savings. That's huge. Yep. <laughs> yep. And who can apply for this TA fellowship position, and what is the process for that? Uh, the process is that you require, I think, two letters of recommendations and some sort of small essay around why you're fit to be a TA fellow and what all you can do as a TA fellow. so i personally feel the edge i had over other candidates was that since i was already a ta in my first semester mm-hmm. i at least had one letter of recommendation from a professor uh, based on my previous ta assistantship mm-hmm. and i think that personally played a big role okay. uh, as far as the other requirements go i think uh, 
the courses you're applying for a TFLO for having some sort of rapport with that professor also helps because they also need to submit a letter of recommendation for you. Mm-hmm. So which subject were you uh, TAing for when you had the fellowship? So I was TAing for a course which is visual databases. Mm-hmm. Uh, so in my first semester, I was doing some research under uh, the professor John Kender and he was supposed to teach that course in the second semester. Uh, so I had some uh, personal relationship with him since I'd worked with him and he offered to write a strong letter of recommendation for me for the TA fellowship for the second semester. Oh, that's great. So you were teeing, teeing under him for when you had the fellowship? Yep. Okay, and did the workload like increase, decrease or was the same as your previous TA position? So actually it was much, much less because it was only like 25 to 30 students in that course and most of them were like grad or PhD uh, students. So the workload actually reduced from the first semester. But again, like it depends on your own trajectory. You might have it easier in the first and more difficult in the second. Okay. All right. And also I I, I thought um, that you have to have like a TA experience before you apply for fellowship. Is that a requirement or is that just a good thing to have? I think it's a requirement. Uh, and the only way you can apply for it is if you have like previous TA experience for it. Okay, so like uh, people in their first semester can't apply for their fellowship. And uh, the way to the fellowship would be just do a TA in your first semester. And then in your second semester, with that letter of recommendation, apply for the, uh, try and get the TA fellowship. Okay. I think that would be the most uh, sought after path. (laughs) Yes, of course. Yeah, because like if you're doing a TA fellowship in your third semester, you only have to pay for six credits. And that way you'll save like $12,000, right? Because that's the tuition yeah. in the third semester. So, so it's, it makes I the think... most financial sense to do it in the second <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So my next question to you, Mayank, is that I have known you from our first semester itself and you have done so many things. You were doing research and then you were a TA in your first semester itself. Then you were doing a TA fellowship. And of course, in New York, we had a lot of fun. We were going out and um, wasting time as well. (laughs) So how did you manage doing everything? Like... um, and you got, I think you got like great grades as well. So give us your secret. How did you manage everything? I think for sure there were some stressful times and some like long nights where all of us would study in the library till very late, just completing assignments and trying to get done with things. But at the same time, like, I don't think any of us compromised on the fun aspect of being in New York or being in grad school. I think Monday to Friday, whatever, 8 p.m., we would all slog. And then <laughs> Friday night was all about like taking that stress over and then just having some fun. So I think that was the secret, I think, not compromising on the fun part, but also working out throughout the week. Mm-hmm. But yeah. yeah, I think overall experience is great. I think uh, whenever you're coming for grad school, work your ass off, but also don't forget to have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. And I, I, and Mayank, I'm going to attach your videos of having fun now. This point in okay. this. <laughs> Are you fine? Are you giving me your verbal consent? Yes, yes, 100%. <laughs> okay, if, if I don't post it here, guys, go to my Instagram page and uh, see my New York highlights. Mayank <laughs> is everywhere in those highlights. So you should definitely um, mm-hmm. take some inspiration from Mayank if you want to be like him and become a TFL. <laughs> okay. I feel flattered. <laughs> what I'll say. Hmm. So finally, this was an amazing discussion and thank you for sharing all those tips and tricks. Uh, do you have any final thoughts or like final tips or anything that you would like to say to people who are just joining school and looking for these positions? Oh, uh, yep. I think 
the secret would be like the tip would be to try to get a ta position in the first semester if possible because that gives you an edge over your other peers in the second semester uh if even if you get a ta position in the first or second semester try to build a good relationship with your professor so that whenever you're applying for the fellowship or uh, they write a strong letter letter of recommendation for you and the best case scenario would be that they hire you as a ta fellow in their own course mm -hmm. uh, i've seen that happen too so yeah just uh, stay calm and yeah i think columbia will be really great <laughs> okay thank you so much thank you mayank for answering all my questions and i think people have a very clear idea about like what they have to do next and uh, just in case if if anyone has any questions can they like post it down on the comments and can you please uh, answer them um if possible yep. I'll be happy to do that. <laughs> okay, so guys, if you have any other questions for Mayank about TA or being a TA fellow, please put them put them down in the comments, and uh, Mayank will answer. If he doesn't answer, I'll make sure he answers. So don't worry. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much, Mayank, for coming. It feels weird talking to you so formally, like. This. <laughs> yeah. I know it feels very weird. Yeah, but like um, it's fine. It's for YouTube, and this is a secret. My uncle is also going to start a YouTube channel. <laughs> He's just feeling shy about it right now. So in your in the hopefully so. <laughs> yeah, so in the comments you can just nudge him about like starting a YouTube channel as well, and um, yeah. So we'll see you guys in my next video, and um, okay, bye <laughs> bye. Bye. Bye.